Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today we are here to do a quarter two reading wrap up as well as a quick gold check in. All right y'all so today I kind of just wanted to briefly go over my quarter two reading including some bookish statistics as well as how Slayer Fest went for me and then at the end I will kind of briefly go over how I'm doing with my goals so far now that we are halfway through 2023. So we are going to go ahead and jump right in starting with Slayer Fest. So if you're not familiar Slayer Fest is the Buffy themed readathon that I created and this year I definitely made a lot of changes to it including the fact that instead of making it a traditional month-long read-along although you did have the option to do it for a month I did also make it so that you could participate for the entire entirety of quarter two. So from April to the end of June, you could do the readathon if you wanted to try to get as many prompts as possible. Now with regard to Slayer Fest, I'm going to be honest with you and say that I feel like I kind of dropped the ball with my own readathon, not necessarily in terms of completing the prompts for it because I still was up until the very end of June and I ended up completing probably more than I thought that I was going to. But when I say I dropped the ball, I feel like I dropped the ball in terms of community engagement and I feel like that's just because it's a little bit difficult for me when one of the only bookish platforms that I'm actively engaged in is YouTube and it's really hard to communicate with subscribers and stuff via YouTube. There's no direct messaging feature or anything like that. And because of that, I felt like it was really hard to kind of keep up with those who were participating. And it was also hard to just keep others updated on my progress and things like that. So I am starting now working on next year's iteration of Slayer Fest. I'm trying to find a way to make the readathon a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more kind of choose your own adventure. I'm also trying to get a logo created for it. So it's a little bit more official. These are all things that are very, very difficult for me because I am not a creative person. And so I'm trying to enlist some help in this regard. So of course, if you have any feedback that you want to put with regard to Slayer Fest, if you know who might be able to design a logo for it for me, please leave all of that information down below. And then next year, I will probably be doing more in terms of creating a Discord where we can all chat about the readathon and the prompts and things like that and our progress. And now that Threads is a thing, a new social media platform, I feel like that's going to go a long way for me in order to be able to connect with all of you and be more active in the community. But I do have updates in terms of the prompts that I satisfied and how far that I got because I was trying to satisfy as many of the 40 prompts as I could without doubling up. So let's see how I did. And y'all, because there are so many prompts, I'm just going to be running through these lightning quick. I'm not going to be talking about the books or anything like that. I've already wrapped up the majority of these books on my channel already. And if I haven't, they will be coming in my June wrap up. So stay tuned for that. For the prompt of Buffy, I read Crest by Marissa Meyer. For the prompt of the vampire, I read Out of the Dust by Karen Hesse. For the prompt of Willow, I read Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young. For the prompt of Kathy Newman, I read When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. For the prompt of Dawn, I read The Silent Sister by Diane Chamberlain. For the prompt of Veruca, I read Eleanor and Gray by Brittany C. Cherry. For the prompt of Jenny, I read Key to My Heart by Leah Louise. And I also used that book to satisfy the prompt of sweets. For Wesley, I read King of Crows by Liva Bray. For Zach Kralik, I read The Dark Quarters of the Night by Meg Gardner. For Cordelia, I read Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. For Durkindestad, I read Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. For Xander, I read Fly Away by Kristen Hanna. For Maggie Walsh, I read The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. For Joyce, I read The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chen. And I also used that book to double up with the prompt for The Judge. For the prompt of Angel, I read Georgie All Along by Kate Claiborne. For the trio, I read The Raven King by Maggie Steve Otter. For Riley, I read The Last Invitation by Darby Kane. And I also used that to double up with Mr. Trick. For Faith, I read Stay Awake by Megan Golden. And I also used that to double up with The Gentleman, which was just to read an audiobook, so that could have literally been anything. For Robo Buffy, I read The Martian by Andy Weir. For Adam, I read How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. For Giles, I read The Things We Cannot Say by Kelly Rimmer. For The Master, I read The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. For Spike, I read The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. For Darla, I read The Last Party by Claire McIntosh. For Tara, I read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez, which does feature an LGBTQIA plus relationship, but only briefly, so it was kind of cheating, but I made it work. For Drusilla, I read 13 by Steve Cavanaugh. And for both Clem and the Mayor, I read The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. And then the last book I read for Slayer Fest was House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass, and I used that to satisfy the Robin and the Glory prompt. So in the end, I ended up satisfying 34 of the 40 prompts, which is not too terrible. That's probably what, like a solid B plus effort. So I'm pretty proud of myself with that. Like I said, I'm going to do my best to make it a little bit more engaging and dynamic and a little bit more choose your own adventure. In the future, I'm working on it. But overall for me, Slayer Fest was a pretty big success. I was able to do a lot of what I wanted to, even though I changed a lot of the books that I was planning on reading for Slayer Fest. I do hope that if you ended up participating, you at least had a good time while you were doing it. And I hope to see you for the next iteration next year. All right, so jumping into the quarter two bookish stats, I read 35 books during quarter two. 33 or 94% of those books were listened to via audio. And two of those books were read physically. But I will say that while I was reading those two books physically, I was 
also listening on audio. So it was kind of a mixture. Out of those 35 books, 30 of them were geared towards adults. One was geared toward a middle grade audience and four were geared to a young adult audience. And that really tracks because I've moved almost entirely away from young adults. And I definitely don't normally read middle grade. I only read middle grade for a Slayer Fest prompt. And really the only reason why I read YA these days is pretty much to continue series that I was already in the middle of. So going forward, I would not be surprised if this statistic was 100% adult in the future. Out of the books that I read, 18 of them were books that I already owned prior to reading. 16 of those were books that I bought myself and 15 of those I have decided to keep. One of them I have already unhauled and two of them were gifted to me. Nine of these books, I actually decided to purchase them after I read them. So basically I listened to them on audio. I decided that I loved them so much that I wanted them to be part of my collection. So I have since added them to my library and eight of them I listened to and I have decided not to purchase. In terms of genres, six of them are books that I would classify as contemporary slash contemporary romance. It's really hard sometimes for me to distinguish outright romance from contemporary romance, but I typically determine contemporary romance as that there is a book with a romance in it, but that's not necessarily the only or even the main thing going on. So I say I read six contemporary slash contemporary romances, one dystopian fiction, four fantasies, three historical fictions, two horror, one humor, one literary fiction, two magical realism, three mysteries, one nonfiction, one pure romance, where like romance is the main goal of the book, two sci-fi and eight thrillers. So I definitely had a huge variety of genre during quarter two. I had an overall decent time in terms of rating in that I had no one stars and no two stars. And that's pretty much the theme for this year. I have not had any one stars or two stars for the entirety of this year. I have had a couple of DNFs. I don't typically really keep track of those. I just kind of put them down and move on so they are not on the spreadsheet. But I had 10 three star reads, four 3.5 star reads, 18 four star reads, one 4.5, one five. And there was one that I didn't actually rate at all because it's something that I never would have picked up if it wasn't for a reading challenge that I had to satisfy. It was called Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh. It was kind of like a comedy slash self-help slash memoir type story. And it was cute. It was fun. I had a really good time, but it wasn't really something that I emotionally connected to. And like I said, it's not something I ever would have picked up if not for one of these reading challenges. So I didn't really feel like it was super fair to rate it. So I left it unrated. In terms of publication years, I do keep track of that. But for some reason, my stats on here are really, really wonky and I need to fix them. So once I have the answer to like publication years, I will go ahead and post it up here for you. But I'm doing really well on my goal to read primarily backlist novels for 2023. Let's just say that. And the publication years were all over the place for quarter two. And in terms of author statistics, I didn't duplicate any author in quarter two. So every single book was by a different author. 20 of those books or 57.1% were from authors that I had read from before. And 15 of them or 42.9% were from authors that were new to me. And that also, of course, includes debut authors. I don't typically differentiate debut from new to me. So just assume that some of those new to me authors were definitely debut authors. And then in terms of what I've been watching, I don't really have that many updates to give you. If y'all are not familiar, I don't typically tend to watch movies at all. And I don't really watch television on my own either. And if I do, it's usually like a true crime documentary. Typically, if I'm watching something, it is with my husband. Every night after dinner, we sit down and watch an episode of whatever show we happen to be watching at the time. And the show that we are watching is determined by a very sophisticated popsicle stick system. Yes, we have every single show that we want to watch together in a little cup on popsicle sticks. And then when we are done with one season of a show, we go, we pull a popsicle stick, and then we watch the next season of that show. At the end of my quarter one wrap up, we had just started season one of Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy is one of my favorite shows of all time. And I had been just waiting for the moment when I was ready to introduce my husband to it because the show is emotionally devastating. If you have watched the show, you will know what I'm talking about. And I was never emotionally ready to watch it again. I don't think I'm still emotionally ready, but we're there, we're doing it. It's been added to our popsicle stick cup and we got through season one for sure. We also got through season two of Only Murders in the Building, which is absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend if you haven't already watched it. Steve Martin, Martin Short, they are fantastic, of course. We watched season four of Last Man Standing with Tim Allen. It's just kind of a cutesy little family comedy, nothing crazy special. We also got through Castle season seven, and we have just now started the final season of The Big Bang Theory. So that is what we are currently in the middle of. That is really it, y'all. I haven't watched anything independently of my husband since quarter one. I just really haven't had the time or the energy to dedicate to anything, even some true crime documentaries. But really, those are the only things that I've watched since the end of quarter one. In terms of book series, I am definitely making progress. In quarter two, I ended up completing or catching up in five series. I caught up in the Unsub series by Meg Gardner. There's going to be at least one more book in that series, so it's not entirely completed. I also completed the Bellinger Sisters duology by Tessa Bailey, which is It Happened One Summer and then Hook, Line, and Sinker. I completed the Raven Boy Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater, so I finished the fourth and final book in that series. I also finished the fourth and final book in the Diviners series by Little Bray, and I finished the Firefly Lane duology by Chris and Hannah, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. And I'm also feeling really great about the fact that I've actually made progress in several more series. And in quarter two, I only ended up 
starting one series that I plan on continuing with and that is the Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. And then I did decide to DNF one series. I decided to DNF the 10 Tiny Breasts series by K.A. Tucker. I started the second book in that series. I just wasn't feeling it and so I ultimately DNF'd it. So I am making some great progress in the series which I'm very very happy about. All right so those are just some of the reading statistics that I wanted to share with you and that kind of recaps my reading for quarter two. And now since we are halfway through the year just a quick goal check-in. So of course the main goal is the Goodreads goal. I set 100 books for myself and I'm actually crushing that goal. As of right now I have read 73 books so I only have 27 books to read by the end of the year. Thankfully knock on wood or particle board or whatever the hell this is I have not gone into a reading slump yet this year which is pretty unusual because the past three years I've gone into a pretty significant reading slump. Typically it starts in around February-ish and then it doesn't end until May or June so it's a very long reading slump but I haven't gone into one this year and so if this trend continues I'm looking to smash my Goodreads goal so we're gonna see. I'm not putting any pressure on myself to do that. I'm literally just reading when I feel like reading so if I don't feel like reading I'm not gonna read. My next goal was to finish 10 series. So between quarter one and quarter two, I ended up completing or catching up in eight series. So I'm definitely well on my way to completing this goal. If you want to include the DNFs, I've formally DNFed two series already this year. So that would make 10. So I guess technically I have met this goal, but I'm making significant process in other series. And I don't imagine that it's going to be very difficult at all for me to successfully complete two more series by the end of this year. So we're good on that. I also set a goal for myself to finish a bunch of reading challenges. Now, since I made that goal video during Bookmas, I have since stopped for participating in several reading challenges and that is just because I'm no longer using the always fully booked reading planner. It just wasn't working for me. I could not make myself get it out and update it every day. I've since switched to a much simpler digital planner and I don't really feel like keeping track of all of those challenges digitally. So there are a lot that I'm no longer participating in and it is what it is. But in terms of the ones that I'm still actively participating in, there are the two reading challenges that I have set for myself. One includes the authors that I wanted to try in 2023 and I'm doing pretty well on that. I gave myself 16 authors that I wanted to read at least one book from in 2023. I have since satisfied 68.75% of that and that does include one author that I'm no longer really interested in trying or no longer prioritizing trying and that is Julia Whalen. I absolutely love her as a, an audiobook narrator but I don't really feel the need to read her book. Like that's not a priority for me. So I've gone ahead and removed her from this list. I now only have four other authors that I need to read from so hopefully I will be able to do that by the end of the year. I also of course had my 23 and 23 challenge which was 23 books that I wanted to read in 2023 but that list ended up actually being closer to 27 and 23. I have completed 70.37%. So I've either read or formally DNF'd some of these books that were on my list. I currently have only eight books left on this list. So I think that I'm doing pretty darn good on that one. So I am now a moderator for the Bookworm Bitches book club on Goodreads. And in that group, there are a lot of challenges. There are monthly challenges, quarterly challenges, and then there are yearly challenges. And one of the yearly challenges we have every year is a backlist challenge where you can go and read some of the former book of the months that we have had in the book club and read them on your own time basically. And so I ultimately ended up selecting nine backlist titles which were already on my TBR that I wanted to read and I have satisfied seven of those nine. So I only have two more to go. One of them is actually on my TBR for July so hopefully I will be able to get to it and then I would only be one away. I am of course also doing the buzzword readathon from Books and Lala. I'm doing pretty good on that as well. I satisfied 66.67% .67 of this. I still need to satisfy five of the prompts. And then finally the two biggest challenges are Around the World and 52 Books as well as the 52 Book Club Challenge. Both of these challenges contain 52 books. In the Around the World and 52 Books Challenge, I am 67.31% of the way through, so I'm definitely over halfway there, and I'm definitely on track to finish by the end of this year if I can prioritize the books that I need to read for it. And I'm doing even better with the 52 Book Club Challenge. I am 75% of the way done with that. So far, the reading challenges are going very, very well, and like I said, if I can prioritize the books that I need to read for these challenges, I don't see any problem in completing them for the end of the year. My next goal was to track reading stats, which I've obviously done as I'm making this video. I would like to incorporate a little bit more reading stats, but I find that the more stats that I try to keep track of, the more complicated that it gets and the less likely I am to do it. So we're going to see. So far, I have been keeping track of the stats that matter the most to me. So I'm good with that. My next goal was to read books as they came in. And so I was talking about any bookish subscription books that I get or books that I purchase. I'm trying to read those as they come in. And I think that I'm doing an okay job. I feel like I'm definitely reading more as they come in than I'm not reading. I don't really have a specific number to share with you regarding these, but overall I feel like I'm doing pretty well. Another goal of mine was to read only backlist titles. And again, the only caveat there was if it was a subscription book. A lot of those are always going to be 2023 new releases. And since I'm trying to read those as they come in, I'm inevitably going to be reading quite a few new releases. But I have been doing really good in terms of the backlist reads as well. Like I said, I have to fix the publication year stats tracker. But if I remember correctly, I've only read six books this year that were published in 2023. So everything 
anything else has been published in 2022 or earlier. So we're doing pretty good there. Posting consistently was also another goal and I am doing pretty well on that. So we're going to keep that up. And then the final challenge was to increase channel engagement, which I do feel like I've been mostly successful at. And I'm doing other things to increase that engagement, like hosting weekly reading sprints on my channel now. And then, like I said, I have joined threads, which will also hopefully increase my engagement with y'all. So I'm trying to engage with y'all as much as humanly possible. And of course I am commenting or liking every single comment that you give me. So if you send me a comment, I am for sure going to see it. I love when you comment on my videos. I love interacting with y'all. So please continue to do that. All right, y'all, that is it. That is my quarter two wrap up as well as my kind of mid year goal check-in. Please comment down below and let me know what your favorite or least favorite book of quarter two was. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you're not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me like a stats emoji, like a pie chart or a bar graph or something like that for the bookish stats that I shared with y'all today. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending what I could do. And I would sure love to see you in one of my next videos. Bye guys. Thank you.